All right, let's begin by defining one of the big words I used in the intro, immunometabolism. Can you help break that down for our audience and give us a sense of what it means and, and why it matters? Immunometabolism is really a kind of amalgamated word from two stems. Uh, immuno, which refers to your immune system, and metabolism, which I think is a kind of concept that will be familiar to all of your listeners as the way that we use energy. So some research that's been emerging over the last 10 years shows that your immune cells are really dependent on the way that they process energy for what they do. They need certain types of energy to use to do certain things. And in a disease like an autoimmune disease, that energy is really critical for fueling an attack that the immune system mounts on your tissues that can lead to really debilitating symptoms that patients who have those um, conditions experience. The science of applying immunometabolism really refers to trying to change the way that those cells use energy to change their behavior. I think we can understand that at a macro level by thinking about when you go into a restaurant, for example, and you see the menu, and you know that if you're going to have certain food choices, you might end up behaving in a slightly different way. Uh, if you maybe decided to eat the entire chocolate cake as opposed to eating the salad, you're obviously going to behave differently afterwards. What we do is just delete some of the things from the menu. We just say, immune cell, you're not going to use this today. And that changes the way that they behave. How did you get into this particular field of medicine? Um, do you know, actually a combination of um, serendipity and interest, um, I think. So my first degree is in biochemistry. And um, when you train as a biochemist, you receive this gigantic wall poster that shows you every single way in which a cell can metabolize energy. And a lot of the degree involves trying to remember that. So I had a kind of fundamental interest in the area of metabolism to begin with. Um, actually, when I went to GlaxoSmithKline, I was also working in metabolism. So I was working in cardiovascular disease and um, metabolic diseases like diabetes. Um, that cemented the kind of interest in applying um, biochemistry and an understanding of metabolism to a drug discovery. Um, and really the immune system is king. So putting those two things together, it kind of became um, a, a natural home for me to work on um, the way that immune cells really process their energy. What kind of history is there to this? It, it feels like this is, we're hearing about this maybe publicly for the first time, but I imagine there's been research in this space. Um, how, how new is this? How innovative is this? And, and how much research has been done you know, over the past 20 or so years? The area of metabolism really enjoyed its heyday, I would say, in the 60s and the 70s. Um, most people who uh, will have done any biology at school might have learned about an organelle that sits in the cell called the mitochondrion. And they probably would have learned that the mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell. It's a very standard kind of phrase that lots and lots of people will be able to remember from their school days. And that um, phrase really comes from that research in the 60s and 70s. Actually, after that, everyone thought that they really understood everything there was to know about metabolism. And it wasn't until probably the um, late noughties, um, early, I guess, early teenies, 2011, 2012, that a um, researcher in Ireland, Luke O'Neill, uh, really made some strides into understanding how um, changing the way that um, metabolites and energy, ATP is the energy currency of the cell, flow through immune cells can change their behavior. And it really since then, that was a kind of profound change in the way that people thought about metabolism. Um, and the field has taken off since then. Lots and lots of research now going on, trying to understand um, how different cells use different sources of energy and how that changes the way that um, the cells behave when they're inside your body. Are there particular diseases or disorders that you believe this form of treatment will be advantageous over, let's call them traditional pharmaceuticals or uh, whatever the standard 
medicines that are used against those diseases today? Is this is are, are certain disorders more susceptible to being treated by this method than others? Um, yes, so what we think is that this method has got profound implications for treating autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or ulcerative colitis, uh, but also a really second major category of diseases which are called fibrotic diseases. And that includes diseases like um, uh, lung fibrosis, uh, lung scarring, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. That's actually a very cancer-like condition. So once you're diagnosed with it, um, you've got a median survival of two to five years. Um, and actually none of the existing drugs are going to improve your chance of surviving that particular disease. So we think that applying this particular technology, this science is going to have profound impacts for patients who've got that disease, also autoimmune diseases.